Hello everybody and good morning and uh, welcome to the Crown Hospital Railway. It's the 1st of September 2023 and the layout's all finished and done and I think we've mentioned that more than enough. Um, I was moving some trains this morning and um, I realised, uh, you know, I had an engine on the front of the uh, Felixstowe vans and and what was that engine because I'd forgotten what it was so I reversed her off of the inner loop and got her into view like here and so we can see what that engine is and she she deserves a mention one she was one of the first batches of engines I ever bought so this engine's probably been in service on the Crownless model railway for approximately 10 years just coming up for 10 years service and she's a railroad version of a schools and um, something that uh, people might just completely overlook because it's got the railroad name on it but this is absolutely fantastic it's a beautiful beautiful engine and absolutely fantastic and I think she deserves a second look um, don't be put off please don't be put off the fact that it, it was issued under the railroad range and let's just have a look what you get because we're people of my age we were on a pension probably a meagre pension we can't afford too much disposable income because we just haven't got it and uh, there could be youngsters too that are limited with money so what you get with this engine a lot of bang a lot of bang for your bucks it really is good value for money and i'm going to look at some of the parts and components of this engine which make this engine up make that statement um more truthful it's beautiful first of all the finish this is olive green immaculate I'd put my head above the parapet and say, this is as good, the finish is as good on this locomotive as it is on a 258 quid locomotive. It's an incredible paint finish on this with the lovely white bands and piping that's all over the locomotive. You've got it on the cylinders, you've got it on the boiler, the cab and the tender. And more importantly, and we tend to overlook this, We've got it on the wheels. These wheels are actually olive green. So you, the drivers are olive green. The, the bogey wheels are olive olive green. Everything's correct. This one is Charter House, and the nameplate is immaculate. There are some of the things I want to point out that you might ordinarily gloss over or just miss. Look at this turn, and it's turned, and it's brass, not plastic. These are called sniffer valves and they're, they're, they're sort of kind of bolted to the top of the smoke box and that's the sniffer valve on the on the right hand side of like there's another one on the other side but you've got to pinch yourself now and again to to, to remember that you're looking at a, you're looking at a railroad model some nice hand rail going across the uh, front of the smoke box door uh, the hinges the straps the hinges have been packed, picked out in, in silver we go down you've got the lovely red buffer beam and look at those buffers turned metal buffers not plastic on this occasion got the engine number 903 on the buffer beam with the letter e which might stand for easily i'm not sure okay it's only the toy like uh, vacuum pipe but it is there and it has got a facsimile of, of, a, of a of a vacuum pipe um let's go back to this because this is certainly worth a look and certainly worth a look in anybody's book i'm trying to get in on it if i can let's get that into camera look at that that is tiny that is tiny i have trouble picking that out without my glasses but it's charter house and it's immaculately done look at each letter each letter no no smudging you know, no sort of double printed by error. It's absolutely immaculate. And there's the splasher with the white, with the white um, pinning going over it. And the tender, let's come out to a normal focus. The tender is lovely with the white piping. And it truly is a beautiful engine. And for railroad model as well, they haven't skimped on the mechanics because on the mechanics of it she has got all six wheels on the tender pickup as well and there is a cable that goes from the tender to the engine well it's a multi it's a multi-wired um, cable it's got about four or five wires in it with a little white plug and it's a beautiful beautiful model now when you buy one of these or when you did buy one of these you get something for nothing you get a freebie and um, it's the greatest freebie you could ever be given. 
And where is it? I'll tell you where it is. It's right in there. And it's the X6442 motor. Beautiful, beautiful motor. It really is nice. Um, you had motors that had brushes and springs, big, big carbon brushes. And uh, those of you who are conversant with the Tri X03, X04, you'll understand the kind of setup that I'm talking about. A conventional electric motor and then today we've got coilless motors motors with no kind of moving parts inside no brushes no commutator they're coilless well this motor is midway between the two because it has got brushes but it is like something you've never seen before it has a commutator but where the brushes would be you've got like these gossamer very thin pieces of material I don't know if in the summer you've ever seen those green fly. I'm not talking about the, the avid ones that you got on roses. I'm talking about the big one with big wings. It, it's all green. It's, it, the wings are green, the body is green. Everything's green on this, on this fly type thing. But it's the wing. The wing is green and it's almost translucent. You can see right through it, it's so thin. This material is very akin to that. And on the end of that material, either painted or applied with another process, there's some conductive material, some material that conducts electricity and these two gossamer wings just gently rub on another part of the motor and the benefit is they're frictionless. The motor offers no friction at all when you spin it with your finger and I'll show you the little person. That's the motor, the X6442. In my humble opinion Probably the best model railway locomotive motor that's ever been made, and there she is. And I bought from the guy down in Cardiff, I bought 40 of these at one stage. And they think, oh, the old boy's balmy, he's lost it, he's lost the plot. Well, no, not really, because when I tell you that these motors at the time were retailing at 98 pence, 98 pence for a, a really good motor. So why did I buy 40? Well, I've got a fleet of these schools i've got a fleet of the 440 county class um churchwood county class they use the same motor the compound lms compound uses the same motor the london and northeastern railway d49 stroke one they use the same motor so i've got lots of locomotives that do use this motor and as you know hornby have the habit of discontinuing motors so you could end up with something like cock of the north or tornado was a good example burns the motor out and you can't get a motor it just it, so I, I bore that in mind when I bought them I've got a supply of motors and at 98 pence you'd be an idiot not to but I do do conversions I do muck about and I do alter locomotives and I do try to make a mediocre locomotive a lot better locomotive and this is one of my efforts that is the 4F um, that it's got the same size motor so all, in all my 4Fs they've got about six five or six of them in on the layout they've all now got the X6442 motor beautiful motor and the other thing I did the tires not the wheel the, the metal tires have got a groove in for a traction tire I remove those I, you need a little engineer's vice and you can pop them off with some spacers you pop off the uh, metal tire and put on a metal tire that hasn't got the traction tire groove and then you gain pick up on that axle that axle and that axle plus six pickups on the tender so you can see it was i like to think a wise decision to buy those mo lo motors in bulk because if you found one now if you were lucky and fortunate enough to find one now i don't think you're going to get it for 98 pence but anyway that's an old man's idiosyncrasy isn't it i'm going you know always good to have spares but anyway i thought we'd move these vans this morning and moving these vans this morning we brought this into play and she certainly is a lovely locomotive i'm going to try to um, do a bit of david bailey just to show you you know how good the detail is on this model yeah. now that says I think that says Southern Railway, well, Southern RLY, Southern Railway, E for Eastley, I think, 
and it's 903 and look at the detail of that now these have got enough detail on them to be good to be good scale models there is certainly enough detail on these to be good scale models which they are there's certainly enough detail on there to satisfy anybody but the good thing i'm old i'm old i'm 70 i'm 74 and the good thing for me and youngsters and people of the same age bits don't fall off of these you don't pick one up in dread thinking oh something's going to fall off of this because they don't and so they're they're detailed enough i think to be called a scale model most definitely i'll come back to why i say that in a second why i de determine this as being a, a scale model but also strong enough to be robust now to give you some idea this is 10 years old still got this original motor um, she's undergone changes of traction tyres. She's had three or four sets of traction tyres in her life, but that's that's a consumable, so we expect that. But um, not only have bits fallen off, she's been thoroughly reliable. Now I go back to the statement I made. Well, well how can you rate that as a, as a scale model? Well, I'm just going to show you the, these turned sniffer valves on the top. I think we've looked at those before. But I'm going to, well, I've got the camera in this position. Look at that sniffer valve there. Brass, turn brass sniffer valve. And there's one on each side of the chimney on, on the smoke box. Absolutely incredible detail. If we pan slightly to the rear, I might have to come up slightly. That's the steam dome. Then go a bit more. Look at those two turn brass safety valves, beautiful. And now the coup de grace, now, you know, you've got to remember we're looking at a railroad model. I'm just going to come out on the David Bailey. The whistles, I think, are up here somewhere. But this is a real copper, metal copper pipe, and it goes down. Let me just come out of that focus. It actually comes through a hole in the foot plate there, and it goes up, it goes behind the handrail, goes over the top and down the other side and that could have been molded in plastic it could have been molded as part of the firebox but they haven't it's real metal and um, these are the reasons why reasons I say qualify this as being a scale model now if we go down remember the price when these come out they were not expensive now I'm going to try to get this I think I've got everything in this is the valve gear on this particular locomotive. It's beautiful. This this arm here, this crank arm, that's the valve Schwartz, a valve gear arm. You've got the cross head, which is that part there that slides in and out those rails that are atop, so they're the motion rails. This is the drop link that goes down there. And now, you hardly ever see this, and I bet people who own these haven't seen it just between the drop link there there's a tiny little link that just goes from there and it connects to the cross head it's tiny it really is and it's got riveted in two places i've been told by somebody who knows more about steam engines than i do that that's called the motion link so you've got the drop link coming down and the motion link connecting the bottom of the drop link to the cross head and the cross head slides in the the motion slides um this this rod here this that goes in and out of the cylinders and if we move around slightly you can see it going into the cylinders that's the piston rod and that on the other other end of that rod that you can't see inside the cylinders you would have the piston that is pretty much as per the real locomotive and again you've got to pinch yourself and remind yourself you're looking at a railroad model incredible as it is it's lovely it is a lovely lovely model and as i say it's strong enough to be robust and fit for purpose and it's reliable um, I don't. I can't see why why you would want much more than that. When it's running round, I mean, this is the effect. I mean, you know, it's hard to differentiate. Is that a top of the range, you know, super detail school, or is it the cheaper railroad version? It's very very hard to um, 
uh, to spot but she's a beautiful Indian and performance wise I'm going to back her up and what I'm going to do with her I'm going to make up all these vans up the 1 in 21 gradient on the um, on the elevated section so I'll just reverse and back and we're we're just going to use that engine there because I want to make sure that we've got quite a good magnification right here we go we're going to take a run at this because it's not fair to and there she comes not easy she might suffer a little bit of wheel slip yeah she's she's struggling but she hasn't lost traction has she yeah she's lost traction there just a tad so what I'm going to do is just like a real driver give increase the barriers no that's we didn't really give her a fair let's go back and try again and this time we're going to go at a slightly higher rate of berries there she goes softly softly catchy monkey and she's doing well to propel I mean as you probably know if you're an operator yourself you'll know that no locomotive likes propelling. Right, here we go, slightly higher rate of knots. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on, she's slipping a little bit. No, we've done it. We've done it, isn't that great? Beautiful. And the other thing, you could always tell a good locomotive by its abilities to propel. And I'm going to illustrate that now. We're on the coming down part of the gradient, the downhill going home bit, but we're going to propel the train up the gradient. Not easy. There's the northeastern brake van, and we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight closed vans, and there she comes. Gravity will play a part in a minute, and she will pick up the berries and pick up the speed. Hey, look at that. Woohoo! But, importantly, she didn't become the route. Now, one more thing, just a quick test. Here we have two Pico, one there, one there, two Pico ST250, the diamond crossings, um, and together, two together. So the, the amount of nylon dead sections here is phenomenal. And I'm gonna show you the conductivity of this engine and again we've got to remind ourselves it's a, a railroad so I'm going to try and get both those diamond crossings in camera get myself on the regulator and right let's have a look I'm giving it the berries there she is I want to do this slowly look look at that a resmication on them that's the case for the defence and I'll do that again, but this time we're propelling the wagons. Um, there's not many engines that would go across there without stuttering or maybe a little 0 4 uh, I've got an engine that I call the Slug, and she's had a lot of work lately because we had to test all the circuits as we put them in. And this is my test engine, and it's just an old something I picked up at a toy fair, it's got no coupling hooks but it does go. They were nicknamed pocket rockets back in the day. But I use this um, for testing circuits when I've completed all the soldering. That would not go across those two diamond crossings. So any engine of this configuration, little 040, is gonna have trouble with these diamond crossings. And um, unless you want to go to the expense and the expertise of having live frog points and crossings, you haven't got much choice, but anyway let's try doing this in reverse we've got both the, the diamond crossings in focus in camera sorry there she goes slow as we can now she's stopped there so she has got there's a wheel on the nylon there there's a wheel on the nylon there i think she has got what we call gapped but let's just try her again going forward Give her one more go. Yeah, fine. 
as long as you keep the bearings up slightly and going the other way. Yep, we're okay. So, you know, on, on electrical conductivity, if you like, for want of a better word, how could we how could we rate this? Well we could rate it if we get it in camera would be nice, wouldn't it? There she is. Right. Um, detail, attention to finish. Well, I think she's got enough detail on her to be a scale model. So I'd give her a 10 out of 10 for that. Um, reliability, definitely 10 out of 10 because I can vouch for this engine being immaculate from performance and reliability point of view for the last 10 years. And she has been used. Don't think my engines sit around not being used because they do get used because we run to a, an imaginary timetable and this engine has had lots of mileage on the clock and and value for money well that would really be a big 10 out of 10 she certainly value for money and um i just wanted to share that with you because she's such a nice engine and i've just thought of something else and i don't know if the light is going to let us do this but we're trying um one i think the light might stop us Let's come down here a bit. It's the brake blocks. Those those brake blocks, if we can, yeah, we can get on one there. Just look how near those brake blocks are to the actual rim of the wheel. It's, it's incredible, incredible attention to, to detail. And, um, and there she is. And that, that's the Hornby railroad schools if you haven't got one all i'd seriously recommend is that you do you do try to uh, source one to find one because they're, they're you know they are nice engines well she's in the way here i can't leave her there because we want to run some trains later so we're going to park her up on the top of the viaduct and put the handbrakes on so if you just bear with me because we can do that move now Brakes are on, brakes are on now. Oh, on yes, on, on very much on. And we leave her there on top of the brick built viaducts and the handbrakes can be screwed on. Now, while we're on about value for money, there's not many things, you know, in the Hornby range that you could say um, are value for money. But there's one engine that's been in the catalogue for quite a long time and it's one engine that always seems to remain in the catalogue which would indicate to me that it probably is a good seller it is a best seller um, just bear with me i'm going to set this up right this is my petrol train we're moving out which happens to be one of the heaviest trains that have it but it's not the petrol train we're interested in it's the motive power on the front this is another engine while we're in the uh, area of value for money and there she is Sir Nigel Gressley's P2 um, Cock of the North the, the real engines were developed for I think it was the Ad Aberdeen to Edinburgh route where, which had some very very severe gradients I'm going to just try to get that valve gear in a photographic position which is there and there she is really really value for money she's in the railroad range she's still available and when I bought this and they come out brand new brand spanking new they were 79 pound and that's a good 79 pound of anybody's money um, all right it hasn't got etched brass nameplates we wouldn't expect that would you on an on a engine of this price but look at that cock of the north it's that's printed on there but you know Oh, you've got to be expert. You've got to have 20-20 vision to be able to look at a glance when that goes past you. That's not edged brass. The wheels are beautiful. They're, they're apple green as well. There's the 
most peculiar caparossing valve gear, where the, gear, the valve gear was turned by a shaft. Um, unlike um, the valve shafts, this is, I think this was called caparossi valve gear, big black cylinders and we go along and it's lovely because it's a 282, which I think, I'm not sure people have put me right if I get this wrong, I think that's called a Mikado. Now one engine, one, oh good, we've got it. <laughs> I didn't know whether we were going to be lucky enough to be able to pick this out and see it. Not only the wheels spoke wheels, and that's correct for this engine, the tender did have spoke wheels, and that's quite unusual because most of the A3, A4s, most of the locomotives in this family of tender uh, have disc wheels. But on this particular engine, it might have been a weight saving exercise, I don't know, but on this particular engine, she has got spoke wheels. And not only spoke wheels, remember this is a railroad version, yet again, cheap version. They're apple green. They had no reason to do that. You can't see them. <laughs> Very lucky if you can see those wheels going around when the locomotive's in operation. But they are spoked and they are green. And level of detail? Well, okay, there's some piping that's missing. The, the red shadow is missing off the lettering. But I don't think that um, you know, sort of degrades the locomotive at all. That's not got any effect really on the overall effect of the, the locomotive. The detail you have got is superb. You can see the coal coming out of the tender there and the coal is black, yet the tender bulkhead is green. You've got the 202001, her number cab glazing. Always nice to see cab glazing on a cheap logo. And just in here, if we can find them, where are they? Maybe we're not gonna get them at this angle, I don't know. I'll try, I'll pan across. We might have to lift the camera up. Yeah, we've had to lift the camera up. They, they're sunk in and they're level with the top of the logo. But there are two real brass safety valves in there, believe it or not. But when you bring the camera down, you lose them because they're kind of flush. Um, some lovely pipe work. Just there. Lovely look at those little individual pipes going to that equipment on the side. The hand rails are incredibly fine detail, absolutely incredible detail on those hand rails. Look at that, really, really nice and very powerful. This is, I'm talking about the model now, a very, very powerful locomotive. And there she is, Sir Nigel Gressley's P2. And I just bring her into the into the conversation because we were talking about value for money and Hornby get a lot of stick lately but one thing I've got to thank Hornby for that they probably one of the only companies at the time that had the balls and the guts to release this locomotive because when you think about it only a few four or five in the real world were made it's a very obscure locomotive it's limited in what you can do. You can't do a black one, a red one, and you can't do other coloured ones because they just didn't exist. So your, your, your choice of prototype is going to be pretty limited. You're going to come, come down to this. And so that doesn't give you a lot of sales opportunities. You can't, you know, market this as, as other versions because there wasn't really any other versions. And one of them, I think, is Earl Marshall. A slightly different valve gear but apart from that you're, you're stuck with it and uh, I can understand at that price when they were released and I can remember this being released with Tornado they released the two at the same time this and Tornado but this particular engine is one of my favorite all-time engines and um, definitely put it in the category of a scale model and it's really really good quality what what you've got I'm not looking at what we haven't got it's so easy to start criticizing oh, it hasn't got this and in 1934 it would have had a rivet here i'm not looking at all that nonsense you know of what it hasn't got i'm looking at what you have got and what you have got and what they have supplied is absolutely fantastic. The finish, the paintwork on this, the finish is, is um, absolutely perfect. And this engine, the history of this engine for me, 50 quid, 50 quid happens. And I'll tell you what was wrong with it, if I got my pointer. And we're looking at the very side. Uh, zoom in, down a fraction. 
and there's the culprit. Oh, bridge too far. There we are in focus. You can see I see the hexagon top there of that crank pin. That crank pin was missing, wasn't in the box, wasn't anywhere to be seen. And it was sold by Hatton, sold as seen, needed attention. 50 quid, um, sourced a new, a new crank pin set from Lendons of Cardiff, put the crank pin in and she's been as good as new ever since. So you can get bargains even on a bargain price loco, you can still get a bargain. And I think that was 50 quid well spent. Again, while we're on this particular shot, look at the brake block. Look how that brake block is so close to that wheel. It's a real, real scale model. It's lovely. It has got vacuum pipes and we're going to look at the front. we we'll just look at the front of this engine because it's got quite a unique front. Now this engine doesn't pick up power from the tender. It, the tender is what we would call in the railway terminology as a swinger. Yeah, now look at that. I'm just going to come back and tell you. Look at that. It's got a proper scowl vacuum pipe. It has got a front coupling, which I always fit because you never know when you, no matter how big or small the engine, one day you're going to need an engine to move a rug coaches out the way or it's the only engine available. And when you think about it, if you, you don't have a front coupling, it's operational use, you've reduced by 50%. It's only 50% good for being a general dog's body, but if you've got an engine like this one and someone took the time to fit a front coupling, you've got 100% flexibility, you can use it for all manner of things. So I like to fit a front coupling, even if you don't use it, it's handy to know it's there. We go up fractionally, we'll see, we should see in there, a real brass whistle, turned, beautiful. Um, a little hand rail on the smoke box door, the little dart that's been picked out in silver, the straps for the hinges for the smoke box door have been picked out in silver. And all in all, a beautiful model, beautiful model. And again, I'll make a suggestion, you don't have to follow it. If you haven't got one and you see one, buy it. What I'm gonna do now, just to finish off, Remember, she doesn't pick up power from the tender. What I'm going to do is just try a little bit of a continuity test for the traction current. Here she goes. There's the first diamond crossing, no problem at all. Coming up to the second diamond crossing, no problems, hopefully. Across a Hornby set of points, which she's done admirably. And now the coup de grace. You've got to have a good loco to do this, trust me. You won't get this from a loco that goes in fits and starts and jerks. We'll clear those points which we've done. I do happen to know that that's number six points, which we will reverse. And now this really is the coup de grace, and I'm touching... <laughs> I'm, I'm touching wood, <laughs> because... The last thing you want to do is to be gobbing off on the camera and then the engine doesn't do what you said it was capable of doing. There she comes. Look at this. And that's quite a, that's quite a, going at quite a rate of knots. Uh, there she lives there. Uh, maybe take her back a fraction more because we're a bit close on the clearance point there. So take her back a little bit more. And that engine too, one thing it, it did just did then, which reminded me, and I haven't mentioned it, absolutely silent. That engine runs absolutely silently. And um, just to show you that I don't just run uh, steam engines, I'll just quickly bring another train into view. And this is a, I call a pretty engine. A lovely engine because it's King Arthur. Oh, Knights of the Round Table and Camelot and Sir Lancelot and all those kind of things. Guinevere brings back lovely childhood memories of you know Knights of the Round Table. And there she is, King Arthur. She's an 87 and she's 87010. So she's the 10th one of the class. 
lovely little touch they've modeled the cab window slightly open i think that's a lovely little touch very non-working but a very realistic pantograph scale scale pantograph and that is another engine so you know it's horses for courses some people might like the modern image like this one some people might like the 1930s cock of the north style but i run them all i just run them all because i just like all all locomotives and just quickly on this one to show you the continuity of this one we'll um we'll take her back What I like about this one, when you turn the regulator on, she buzzes just like a real, you know, if you've been at, to Houston. That's the breakfast buzzer, I've got to go. Um, when he's telling me breakfast is ready. If you've been at Houston or somewhere like that and seen these pull away, this is, this is the noise you do get. And, and show you the continuity going across those crossings. Fraught with danger. And there she goes. Just take a look at her coming down the back straight through Monstock through Duckford. There she goes. Absolutely wonderful. And I'm back to playing trains. And was it worth it? Was it worth two months of disruption? Absolutely. Absolutely. Because you can see now by the performance of this train, electricity wise, we've got everything tickety boo. Anyway, like I always say, if you only enjoy your trains half as much as I enjoy mine, you know, if you're going to get half the amount of fun from your toy trains as I do mine, all of us together can make the world a much, much better place. And there we go. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. What my old friend who died, George Nolan, what he would say as a glider, it glides across the track just like a, a puck in curling. You know, in curling or ice hockey, you have these things that slide across the top of the ice, and we used to call them gliders. Thanks for watching. Catch you all later. Any queries, questions, let me know, and I'll do my best to answer you. And whoever sent me the book, could you please contact me, because I just have not got a clue. Somebody sent me a beautiful book, and I just want to say thank you. So if you did send me that book, let me know. Thanks very much for watching and I'll catch you all later and just end off with the class 87 zooming past and here's somebody comes to say dad breakfast is it breakfast oh it's breakfast she comes and positions herself there when it's breakfast catch you all later stay safe stay warm and uh, catch you on another video and bye for now